but we actually, he practices out of his house. He's in an office in his house. And of course I come in, it's beautiful Phoenix. I'm like, oh my God, I live in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This is great. And he was like, listen, he's like, if I see you at a coffee shop, I'm not going to say hi. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm not going to try to be he your friend. He was giving you the rules. It was good. Well, like, I learned quickly thereafter. He's like, you have a problem with boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> it's like, what's a boundary? Today we have on founder of Nonprofits Given Hour and the Campaign to Change Direction and newly named Executive Director of the Prevents Task Force to Combat Veteran Suicide, Dr. Barbara Van Dalen, who also hosts mental health series Inner Space. I want you to give me a little bit more of a rundown on you, Dr. Barbara. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm a child psychologist. I grew up in uh, rural California, very rural. My mom, uh, soon after I was born, my mom had a psychotic break and um, was later diagnosed with schizophrenia. And at that time, my dad, who was a, um, a veteran, he'd come back from World War II, met my mom, had my three older brothers, and this was all happened in LA. And then he wanted to give um, his kids a different life, so he moved us to rural California. But the move triggered, a, we now think, a, a psychotic break um, in my mom. And that really, um, it changed all of our lives, yeah. set the course for my life um, to later become a psychologist and then to do a few other things along the way. But I'll stop with that. Yeah, we'll, 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 I'm sure we'll find those I'm out. sure you will. Were you, so you're the baby sister of four. Yes, I am. In fact, my nickname growing up, I still remember this very fondly, was Sister. Oh, because cute, yeah. I was the only one. Yeah, your so sister. I was sister. So my parents decided to have kids later on in life. Mm -hmm. um, they, like, my, my dad's in his 70s, and mm -hmm. I, growing up, and maybe it's like a combination of just like being of an older generation, but also like this athletic, like the old school athlete background is like always like, be tough, like, don't break, be right. tough. Push through and, it, um, right? Yeah, and like I had obviously like a unique childhood experience having been sick and losing my leg with cancer mm -hmm. um, that I like, I had like seen a smattering of psychologists but my dad was always like, be tough, be tough. Mm. And so it wasn't until I actually moved to Phoenix and I joined an elite training group, primarily of Olympians, and then we started a Paralympic group, um, that it was lightly suggested to me that I see a sports psychologist. Mm -hmm. And like now I feel like after I've done my, after my experience of treatment with psychology, with my psychologist, Mark, um, and also doing EMDR treatment for PTSD, for mm -hmm. some like, you know, light trauma, Heavy trauma. That Heavy trauma. Got, that, you know, trauma is trauma. Trauma is trauma. And just last night, this is so wild because my daughter, who's 18 now, my youngest, her, she's the little sister of. She's, she's got sister. a big. Yeah, she's got a big sister. But I was explaining to her that EMDR, which um, began many, many, many years ago, was originally seen as as basically hocus pocus. Yeah, pseudoscience. Yes, and now it is it is one of the most effective um, approaches and treatments used by uh, veterans and, and rape victims and uh, trauma survivors, yeah. and it's very effective. It's super effective. Yeah. I, that's what I thought too. So I was like, I was almost like, a sh I was like hiding in the shadows going into my psychologist's office. I'm like, ah, this is kind of fluffy, but you mm -hmm. know, I'll, I knew I went in. I love my, I love this, like, I love talking about my therapist because he's like <laughs> a tough sports yeah. guy and like, it's so funny. Because like when I was sick, when I was sick as a little kid, they suggested I see a child psychologist. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't like, like, I didn't like being a, ch I was always kind of bright as a kid, so I didn't like being spoken to like I was a child. Mm. I didn't like that. But uh, growing up, like I had always been, I've always been like bright and charismatic. So there's other times later I'd try to see a psychologist mm -hmm. and um, like I always, like I can always like connect with people. And like, I'm always friendly. And I just, uh, I started seeing Mark, I went in and I'm like, listen, like I still was kind of on the fence about therapy. Um, but I'm like, I know I go to track meets and I just get derailed. Like my focus is off. Mm. Like if an official is mean or like, you know, rude or short, like it just like, I catch myself getting distracted and really anxious and it's affecting my performance and whatever needs to happen. Like I just need to perform better. I need to be able to focus and perform better. Um, but we actually, he practices out of his house. He's in his own office in his house. And of course I come in, it's beautiful Phoenix. I'm like, oh my God, I live in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This is great. 
And he was like, listen, he's like, if I see you at a coffee shop, I'm not going to say hi. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm not going to try to be your friend. He was giving you the rules. It was good. Well, like I learned quickly thereafter. He's like, you have a problem with boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's that? (laughs) It's like, what's a boundary? Well, so we, I I mean, that's kind of, now we're kind of getting into my my part of the the universe, which is um, this whole, there are, boundaries are important. Yeah. But in the mental health space, for a long, 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 long time, decades, 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 the boundaries were too rigid Mm -hmm. and, and not helpful. And so... Now it's really important that people like me and like Mark and other folks who are in this field and doing this work think about how to share with people who we're working with that me too. Yeah. That I too have struggled and I too have had challenges and these things have been helpful to me. We're not going to talk about me. We're going to work on you. We ended up, I remember, so even like, I think it was even that first appointment too. He had suggested, he's like, so you had cancer as a child. This is highly traumatic. Um, you went through this, this, and this. He's like, have you ever considered doing PTSD treatment? Mm-hmm. And that was where I learned about EMDR. Mm-hmm. So, of course, naturally, I took offense to that suggestion. And huh. I was like, maybe you should do PTSD treatment. I'm sure. Um, it, but that meant he was right, right? He was, yeah. He touched something that offensive. you were like, who? <laughs> I was like, no, this right. is stupid. But that's a good, that's something good that I think by you doing this show and, and talking to people about this stuff, because that's great. It, it's, we all react defensively yeah. when it's like, There's a, like a it's uncomfortable. Like, ah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that's really cool that you were able to get on the other side of that and, and do that good work. It was not an enjoyable experience. I'm sure. But I'm so glad I did. And after that, like, I feel like I came home, because again, I come from an environment where we don't talk about our mental health. Like, we really don't have, like, a big emotional capacity as far as conversations go for, like, what's really going on, what's going deeper. And since then, I feel like, I make jokes now, I was like, I feel like I'm, like, Oprah with therapy. I'm like, you should go to therapy. You should go, like, everybody should go to therapy. I've noticed, I was actually having a conversation with my friend who moved to New York. He was my roommate. I've known him since high school. He also, like, we have older parents, but we grew up, like, in the same part of Denver. So we have a lot of, like, parallels in our lives. Um... And he's so funny. He's like, don't you feel like after... He started seeing his therapist here in New York. He's like, don't you feel like after you've gone through therapy, like, you just, like, you almost... You use the tools that you've learned in therapy just to interact and give more compassion to other people. It's like, and you just... If it works well, that's exactly... It has, I've that's seen it help it. my yeah. family. Like, me just, like, you know, being healthier, just help my family, help my friends. And it's just been... It's funny because nobody talks about the mental game. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was really fortunate when I moved to Phoenix. I have a coach who is just like this well-known, really well-established Olympic coach, Paralympic coach. And every year he makes us um, do mental resiliency training. So Mm. he has a full presentation and he's told us, but like, you know, in like the tough, good old boy coach way, he's like, listen, he's like, I've had athletes where all the variables were set up in their favor. He's like, weather was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Training was sharp. Like body was good. And they choke at the big show. They choke Mm. at the games because they have some crap going on with their personal relationships. And like, what are the tools? Mm -hmm. And um, and again, I thought I was immune to that until until it really Hmm. was like, you know, affecting me. Mm -hmm. So I've just been like, I don't know. I'm just like, that's a good thing. I've been so excited to say, I've like, (laughs) as soon as they started releasing your episodes too on the podcast, I'm like, here we go. Listen to the pod. (laughs) Yeah, good. I'm glad it's helpful. And, and, And I'm serious, you know, what you're talking about this is the work that I've been spending my life helping people understand. There's nothing to be afraid of. Therapy is hard. It's super it, hard. it can be really hard and painful, <laughs> it's really hard. but it's it's like anything that that is out of sorts. You know, if it was easy to to get it back into the right space, right place, right feeling, you could do it yourself. Yeah. Um, but but it's such a um, you know the way you were talking about tune-ups. Um, you know, it's, it's maintenance, it's just caring for that inner part of us that it's the only way. I yeah. mean, so people should, should find what works for them and, and then, you know, become an evangelist because then you help other I people. I feel like that. Right? I am like, I that love person, it. I'm spinning the sign on the street. I think it's good. No, but the only time, like, I was really suggested to see a psychologist was because I'm sick and it must be hard. Right. Well, that's, I mean, I think that's another really important part of, of sort of where you, your story is that you, we don't talk about these things like that. I mean, people typically, like your dad or anybody else, it's like, 
oh, you know, somebody said I should go to therapy. I should go to therapy, as if that's a, a statement. There, there's something wrong yeah, with you. Yeah, you're in trouble. You're <laughs> bad. Um, you're misbehaving. You know, kids, poor, you know, it's, it's sort of, I spent a lot of time working with teachers and trying to help them understand this kid's family, you know, is, has been separated because of deployments. This kid is dealing with, you know, genetically, they're wired very differently and they're bouncing off the walls. So they're not bad. They're not trying to be difficult. And, and therapy or these tools, they're here to help. Just like yeah. if we had something physically going on, you wouldn't say, oh, you're bad, you need glasses. So that's, that's a really, that's really an important, an important point of where you now see this differently. And I hope that you know other folks hearing this, they maybe think about it differently too. Yeah, I'm so pro-therapy. And that's why I've been really excited to come and sit down with you because <laughs> you have done a lot in your career. Um, a bit. Just, just tell me, I'm like, tell me. So um, I was in Washington, D.C. on 9-11 and I stopped at Safeway to um, get some stuff. And I was standing in the line and the, I'll never forget this, the guy in the, the checker, he looked up at me and there was one other guy standing in the line. He said, I just heard a weird thing on the radio right as I was walking in. He had just come in for his shift. And he said, a, a plane hit the, one of the towers in New York. And he said, huh, must have been a freak accident. And we all looked at each other. It still gives me chills. And it was like in that moment, I knew it wasn't an accident. So I went home and I watched, literally, holding my one-year-old, um, on the Today Show when they were reporting, and behind them, you could see the one tower was in flames, and I saw the plane hit the other tower. Uh, yeah. It was like unbelievable. And so on that day, I was like, okay, I'm a psychologist, I wanna help, I need to help, and I started calling, what can I do, what can I do? There was nowhere to help, no way to, yeah. nowhere to give. And so that was really the beginning of me thinking about what I could do as one psychologist, what I wanted to do. And I knew we were gonna to go to war. You know, it was just a matter of time before there was gonna be the response to the attack. And I had done a lot of work with veterans in my career. My dad was a veteran. Um, he had passed away already, he wasn't alive then. But he, he had saved me because he took care of me and my brothers and and so I knew I wanted to do something and, and a few years later I created this nonprofit organization that provides free care to people in need and we started with the service members and veterans and that was in 2005 and so um, that has sort of been the course of my life since then but it started with that, that trauma on 9-11 yeah. for, for everyone. You know, it was traumatic, and 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 as I shared, I came from you know my own background of my mom being schizophrenic, and and I lost a brother growing up, and it, there was a lot of pain and and tragedy, so much so that I used to you know talk about being tough mm -hmm. and not um, not showing vulnerability or not wanting to seem vulnerable. I didn't talk about any of the stuff that went on yeah. in my family because. You know, you don't want people to think. Yeah, it's almost like like an inge like you're um, betraying, like a betrayal. Right. It feels or, right, or, or and um, too close. You know, it's like yeah. it's okay. I didn't want people to think I had some bad soap opera for a life, which it looked like a bad soap. Yeah, you know, on paper, death, yeah. destruction. You know, mental illness, divorce. It was bad. There was a. It was really bad, and so I just didn't talk about it. Um, and now everything is completely flipped, and I do everything I can to say, "Hey, this happens in life. These things happen to us. Yeah. And it's okay. And we can't control that, but we can do things to help heal each other and heal those we love. And so that's what Given Hour is all about. Um, and uh, I'm really proud of, of what we do. Dr. Barbara, you just, like, you have such a calm manner, and, like, maybe that's part of the job. 
But have you all, like, as a little sister, <laughs> as another, as one little sister to another was little I sister? Was I calm? Have you been like this forever? No, 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 no. No, and, and you know, my daughters would probably say, wait till you get on her bad side. That's the thing. Yeah, so you seem to know me personally. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, when I was younger, because there was a lot of pain and a lot of, of trauma growing up, um, you know, I was, I was a smart kid. Um, I was very empathically tuned into others, which is why becoming a psychologist was a great fit for me. Um, but I was, I was angry and I had a, um, an edge that is pretty much gone now, um, which is, I like this me, um, because I was trying to keep people, you know, in some ways away so that nobody hurt me, nobody else hurt me. Yeah. But my dad was amazing and he really saved me. I think that for me, um, the, the loss that was the most just crushing was when my brother died. Yeah. Um, I was 15 and he drowned. Oh my God, that's and horrible. It was horrible and it was shocking. And it was, he was 21 at the time and we were very close. He had always looked out for me during all yeah. the other trauma and all the other tragedy, we were closest and then on my older brothers. And on that day when I lost him, I was like, okay, just, I'm done. I don't care. And I remember in the days and sort of weeks after that, feeling, you know, angry and hurt. And, and I, could, I remember one time hearing other people in the house like laughing and I was so angry. It's like, how, how can you, you laugh? be laughing? Yeah. And I remember my dad said, sister, come on, come, let's go outside, let's, let's talk. And we sat down and he just got very philosophical and he talked about, you know, David would not want this, you know? And I remember at that moment thinking, even then, that my dad was pushing past his own pain to take care of me. And he was an amazing man in so many ways, had his own post-traumatic stress from the war. Yeah which we didn't know what that was, but it would come out sometimes and scare the heck out I'm of sure, yeah. us. But he was also an amazing dad, or I should say, and he was also an amazing dad. But that, that really saved me, you know, him pulling me out of my own pain. And, and so that wasn't, then that, that wasn't like, okay, now everything's great. And I had some, I had really awful, you know, the, the name of your show, which I really love, um, because, <laughs> During high school, I was never picked for anything yeah. because I was a pretty unhappy kid, and we had, you know, moved into the community, and so I was, I wasn't in the popular group, um, and people, kids around me, didn't know what to do with this strange kid who was in a step family, who people around her kept dying, yeah. who had a, you know, a mother that nobody knew where she was or what the story was. And so what do kids do when they don't know what to do with you? They ridicule you. Yeah, <laughs> or they <laughs> yeah. push you out. Mm. So um, it, was, it was tough growing up during that time. It was a tough time. So was there like one specific moment or was it like a series of events where you were like, I think I'm interested in psychology. I think I'm interested in the mind. I think all probably as soon as I could start thinking about um, what did I want to do, I was really drawn <laughs> um, to psychology. In fact, when I was in high school, there was a psychology class, which was odd, because I lived in this rural community. It just must have been- progressive. It was very weird. I think <laughs> yeah. this teacher just was like, I'll teach psychology. Um, because I, I just think that was yeah, very- just not- But I loved it. Yeah. And I even like planned some unusual sort of interactions with kids in my class to kind of see what they would do. So I was like this little, scientist. I was a little baby psychologist. Um, <laughs> and, and I think um, some, from very early on, you know, that's what I wanted to understand. I didn't know what to call it. I didn't know what it was. But when I did figure out what it was, um, I remember when I went home to talk to my dad. And so my dad passed away when I was 27, when oh, I was in graduate so school. Young, yeah. It was very young. But I had him through college. And I remember when I went home one time, I said, Dad, Daddy, I called him Daddy, Daddy, I think I'm gonna be a psychologist. And I remember he was worried. He was worried that that might be too close, you know, that I might yeah. be bothered. Um, but, and I loved him for that. And I was like, it's okay. 
And it never, I was, I've never been, um, I, I've, I've never been bothered by the field. I've always wanted to help people. And I think wanting to help other people and learning how to do that helped me be less hurt and angry myself. Yeah, it was like another. It was a good thing. That's amazing. I, <laughs> there's been times, for, I'm gonna ask you this question too. There's been times I feel like when I was seeing Mark, especially going through my PTSD treatment, where I really felt like I was like lobbing big bombs at him and I'm like, are you gonna be okay right. after I tell you this horrible thing? And finally I was like, do you have a psychologist, Mark? He's like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, do you, do you see a psychologist? I, well, n throughout my life I have I've sought and been in different forms of, of therapy and yeah. counseling. Absolutely, and if something happened in my life now, would I seek out somebody who was, you know, I trusted to work with. Luckily, I'm married to a psychologist. Nice. So we do that for each other. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if I if something happened um, that I knew that I was not doing well, yeah. of course I would go back into whatever form, whether that was with my husband, with my my family, um, because it's really there's stuff that we can't see in ourselves, no matter how well trained we are. Yeah. And um, I remember I was driving with my husband and I hadn't seen my mom, in, and I didn't even know where she was. I, I, I hadn't seen her in, in over 40 years. I had no wow. idea where she was. Yeah. She, I assumed, I don't know. I don't know if I assumed she was dead or, or not. She's just gone, yeah. Yeah, she disappeared. Um, that's a whole nother story. But, but for this point, what's I think interesting or helpful it was my husband, we were driving along this country road, and he said, you know, honey, if you ever wanna to try to find out what happened to your mom, I will, I will help you. And I said, I don't wanna do that. Yeah. With that tone. That's exactly, yeah. I don't wanna do that. that. You're like, hey. I was like, <laughs> no. I felt like, and he told me later, he's like, he felt like somebody slapped him. And he was like, okay. Um, but it, it got in my head and I started thinking, whoa, what is that? Yeah. So here I was, already, you know, building this organization, already becoming a leader in the space. And here was something that I hadn't known, which was that was not resolved. And so I did a little more work introspection on myself. I talked a lot to him and decided to, to find her or try to find her. And that was really, really important that I do that. So I, I don't think you can be, you can ever be in a place in life. You know, I think about the Dalai Lama, and you know, he's somebody that I have tremendous respect for. I think he would say, you, no matter how zen and aware you yeah. are, you always need to keep looking to understand more because life keeps coming at you. Life will always do life to you. Yes. Yeah, no matter what, it will always serve yes. a hot plate of life. Yes, <laughs> good, bad, or otherwise. Exactly. So you can, you're never done, and that goofy saying that I told my daughter mm -hmm. recently because it totally fit, um, life really is not a destination. It really totally is a journey. And if, you, if you're if you lucky, you get great tour guides along the way. <laughs> Mark that. is a tour guide. Mark I love being a tour guide for people um, when that makes sense. And, and I have really been blessed to work with some amazing people to help them on their journey. And I have had some great tour guides myself. It's time that we change the culture and that's what we're working to do. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Barbara, thank you so much for stopping by. Absolutely. It was such a pleasure to sit down and talk with you. I loved being here and thank you for doing what you're doing. This is a great show, I'm excited to follow it. You know what, I've been following your show and I want everybody to go and listen to Inner Space. It's been a phenomenal show. I love hearing all your stories, all your interviews. It's really been, I feel like I've grown actually. Thank you, Lacey, that's sweet, it's thank you. It's been a little bit more cost effective, honestly, than <laughs> thank Mark, you. But, but Mark's great. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This is Pick Last and Gym Class. Thanks for checking out this week's show. Be sure to subscribe to the Pick Last and Gym Class podcast for an extended interview with Barbara, available on all podcasting platforms.